For culture sensitivity is the, we had to know the structure in the community, um, especially from where I'm coming from, uh, for the Tongan community, uh, the hierarchy in it, you, you really have to know so that you'll be able to work with the community if you know where, you, who do you have to see in regards to the noble people that's in the community, the, um, the church people, the church leaders, they are very powerful in the community and also the elders in the community. So those are the things that you really have to address there, knowing the community, because if you just walk in and say, I want to run a project, you have to be in the community to be able, and I think that really works for us. When we were involved very heavily with the community, we were there almost every day, uh, so that they know we are engaging in what they, they do. The important thing is to collaborate with um, members of the community through their um, work, community organizations, networks, even ethnic organizations. I have Della with me in the community. It was uh, very interesting because we have both different cultures, but at the same time, working with the Tongan community, I thought I know my community, but I didn't. And I think this was something that I was engaging with the community and I think I am still heavily involved in my Tongan community now, starting from that project, knowing what their needs are in there because if you come as an outsider wanting to know and people are very suspicious about health, they want to know what, what are you here for, what do you want from us and if they know transparency is one of the big things for them. Um, if you clarify why you're there for and, and they know what they get out of it, then they will engage in it. Who are the important or key community leaders we can approach? How to approach them? What are the cultural practices that they have? Uh, so for example, for the Pacific, they pray before and after uh, a meeting. So if you do that, it shows respect so it shows respect for their culture and sensitivity for their culture. And that really worked well with us. Um, most of them uh, really gave uh, very um, rich information about what we were uh, trying to study. People started to realize that Della is wanting to be part of the community. She engaged with the people really, really well. I, was, I didn't have to be there for Della to to engage with the people so she knows who to, uh, to involve with. And I think uh, along this time, Della learned the culture as well. So she knew who to, uh, to contact. Um, and also the people, the women's group. Della formed a lot of groups after we had that um, garden community with the Tongan community. So her involvement and her engagement in the community was very vital. An example of where working with CALD communities has worked really well uh, would probably be through our, our pilot randomised control trial. So we specifically designed um, uh, treatment approaches that reflected some of the, the beliefs and the values of different communities. Uh, one of the ways in which it worked really well was recruitment was, I'm not going to say easy, but was, was really streamlined. Um, these were patients we were seeing every day anyway. Um, so whereas I'd seen lots of other people were stalling with recruitment, projects were really slow, ours was done really quickly. Um, we were able to include most of the patients that were coming through the clinic anyway. Um, because we had already done a little bit of work with the CAL communities, we had a, a good processes in place for recruiting participants, making people feel comfortable and, and not that they were being used. Um, and so we were able to actually get the project done within the timeframes required for our research budget. Um, and we got really good feedback. So having delivered an intervention that was designed to, to reflect different beliefs and values, we had really high retention rates and, uh, and um, treatment complete completion rates. And the feedback just informally from not only the participants in our trial, but some of their relatives and some of their friends, and even some of our colleagues was that, there's something here, there's something that, you know, this is something we should all be doing, we should all be looking at and can uh, really improve um, your satisfaction with the work you do every day. You have to know the people in the community first and who to see, the elders, 
the, um, the church leaders, the champions in the community. They're the people that you have to tackle first before you start anything. You've got to engage with the people and also participate in what they do. Because if you do that, then people start to know you. And consultation is one of the biggest things. And I think that's where we had a lot of um, people that came. We went and consult and we went, we didn't send letter, we went face to face. <laughs>